So our next speaker is Mrs. Liz Allen. She's Director of Strategic Initiatives F1000, and she's also in the board director of Cross Reference. Please. Thank, thank you, Carlos, and thank you again for inviting me to speak here um, today. I think it's a ple pleasure and a privilege to be able to speak here, but it's a pleasure and a privilege because I feel like I've learned way more than I ever thought I would. I've learned about how linking funding agencies and, and um, publishing and uh, new models of um, working together is just really important. Before I joined F1000 uh, about two and a half years ago, I spent over a decade at the Wellcome Trust, basically reviewing funding programs and doing evaluation. And one of the interesting things when I moved to a, to a publisher, and F1000 is not a typical publisher, but when I moved there, it was really surprising how little interaction there had actually been in a constructive way in the environments that I had worked in between funding agencies and um, publishers and research institutions in a way that was a more an ecosystem to allow research to be shared. So seeing this yellow model and understanding about what you do here is, is just really fundamental and um, inspiring. So I'm going to talk again a little bit about metrics. That is my background. Um, I'm really interested in how research outputs are shared and how we can make things more um, useful. And, and I think we always lose, um, we often lose the context. The whole point of doing research is to have impact. It's for, for a public good. It's for people to use research and share research. And we seem to lose our way a little bit in thinking about the big goal and get stuck in process. So what I want to talk about really, we talk about open science and I kind of think to go back to a lot of what has been discussed here. It's kind of about doing science better. Open is, is, is one of the things that will help us get there, but it's not, I don't think open is the goal. Open is, is the facilitator, and I think we're all doing a great job trying to get there. Um, but I think we need to bear in mind the key thing is we want to bring quality and trust into all the work that we're sharing to allow people to use it and therefore have impact. That's kind of what we're about. Just a little bit about F1000 if you haven't heard about it. This is the images Vitek Tra Trash. He is, um, he's, was the founder of open access publishing really, well one of the big founders of open access publishing. Um, and he set up the Biomed Central group to show that open access as a business model could work. Um, and it took a long time, but obviously we, we're kind of way forward on that now. Um, and he's really supportive of what's going on in Europe. Essentially just to kind of shake things up. And F1000, we're seen as a, you hear the term disruptive publisher. I personally don't like disruptive publisher because I don't think we should be negative about things, we should be positive about things. I think it's about basically moving and doing things and kind of trying out different ways and, and not getting stuck in why you can't do something. Let's just try to do something, which again I think is what Ciela has done. And again, to go back to some of the discussion around metrics, I use this slide wherever I talk about impact, and I kind of think it's the key sentiment. I do agree that metrics, oh, I don't like the word metrics, actually, indicators are important um, for science. We can use them for, for lots of reasons, but what we've got to be careful about is not just taking ones that exist and trying to shoehorn them into what we want to, want to say. It's important to think, you know, not everything that you can count is useful and, and things that you can't count is also useful and we need to be very careful and Einstein, this quote is attributed to Einstein, um, yeah, and it, he knew that. We all know this, but we just need to do something practical about it. And this is the context. This is life and biomedical sciences output. There's a massive growth in output. People are sharing research in huge, huge numbers of different ways. How we share, we discover, how we talk about science is changing really, really fast. And there are t loads of platforms in different ways of sharing research. We all, I think, agree there isn't one size fits all. Different areas of science need different models. Um, but what's key in all of this, if we want to have quality and trust in the output that we are now sharing. One of the key things is that we need to have good basic metadata underneath for all of these kind of platforms that allow us to share information across platforms, discover content and kind of be able to use the work, be able to get credit, make sure that we build indicators that make sense, that are useful to us. And unless we kind of think about building infra uh, metadata into the infrastructure from the start, we end up in a situation where we are using metrics in an inappropriate way or we're just using the metrics that are available instead of thinking about the ones that we really want to have built in from the start. 
just briefly, this, so F1000, we have what we call a post-publication open peer review model. And I'm not going to go into the publishing model in any detail here, but essentially F1000 since about 2013 have been building what is effectively pre-printing into peer review. So we're effectively doing the whole thing at once in one model. And, and this is where VTech, I think, has, has vision. Now there are lots of preprint servers, and I think, obviously, BioArchive um, rather predated what we were doing, but he saw that this would be useful for life and biomedical sciences. So we essentially do post-publication peer review, but it's in a system where the peer, the, you, you basically pre, I'll preprint first, I'll show you. You basically submit an article, it's very much like a preprint stage. We will post it. We will do some checks, quality checks on the work, but essentially it is like a preprint at that stage, except that you've, we are now doing the, pre, the peer review in the meantime. So, but essentially we will not hold up the publication of the work. So essentially it's like a preprint in the whole system. And of course, one of the things with doing preprinting is that we, we are, and we, as we've talked about, and are lots of work underway up to do this, um, we do actually check the work. We do want people to have some sort of trust and be able to sort of know whether they want to use the work. So we do all the typical plagiarism checks, image manipulation checks, we do ethical um, approval checks. We also make sure that the data are accessible and open and where, where that's appropriate. Um, but what we've been doing is trying to work with existing standards that exist out there. We haven't invented it all ourselves. We've been working with companies and, and organizations that actually already do these checks. So I think that's a key thing is don't reinvent wheels unless you have to reinvent wheels. That's okay if you do, but I think there are lots of standards out there that we could all sort of use to help ensure that there's interoperability and the ability to talk between systems. And then we peer review the article. So once we've done these checks on the effectively the preprint status, we would peer review it. But it's open. We invite, when we say open, our model of peer review, this is an, another kind of issue. I, I talked about this on Monday. Definitions of um, peer review and what we mean by open are hugely varied. And we need to sort of, if we're using these terms and we want to share information across systems, we need to make sure that we are using the same definition because that causes all kinds of problems. Um, so what, what our model of open peer review is invited peer review, so they're experts. It's not open commenting, crowdsourcing peer review. We do expert peer, invited peer review, but in addition we invite commenting, but the, the, those comments are treated slightly differently, but it's all open. So I'll pass beyond that. And the one thing that we have been doing, which is partly why I, was, I, I am at F1000, is we, we've been saying to funding agencies, work with us on this. We're, we're not a publisher. We are there as a publisher to share the work that has been funded for the public good by public funding agencies. Um, we will help you share the work. So we've been working with funding agencies trying out this model. Um, essentially the F1000 rolling a preprint in with a pu post-publication peer review model as, a, as an experiment um, with a number of funding agencies and, and we've, we've seen quite inter a lot of interest in this. But the funding agencies are also interested in other models, so we're not the only model out there. It's just that we are providing this and we've set, we, we recognize the importance of working with funding agencies, which is what you obviously do here. And then we've recently, um, we've actually started working with Emerald and the, the two, um, Isabella and um, Andre are sitting in the audience. We're actually going to um, test out using a platform with Emerald um, to sort of use, work with their um, reach program, essentially to do support research publication in the U, um, UN Sustainable Goals kind of area. So again, we're trying out something new, um, just trying to sort of see if there's a way to kind of bring things together. So I've just got some points about research evaluation. Um, I think the key thing here, I think we, we often lose, I, it was talked about yesterday, is research evaluation good for science? And I know that it was talked about earlier, and Carlos has mentioned some of this thing. It, I think it's totally important. It's just that how we do it has to be useful and sensible. And the last point is really important. What we must not do is introduce, uh, you know, we must be aware of unintended consequences and incentives that make people behave badly. You can't avoid that. I think we are being too academic sometimes about that, but you have to be mindful of that, and we have to avoid that where possible and that means designing systems and collecting information that we want to collect because it is useful not because it is available the other kind of thing the point for there I always talk about that we be proportionate about evaluation if you spend more money doing evaluation than you would doing the research that just doesn't seem right so we need to be balanced about what we spend money on um, I used to get asked the question 
as a funding agency, what proportion of your funding do you spend on evaluation? And I don't think there's an answer to that. I think you just need to use it, do it when you need it. So I think we need to be very careful about what we do with evaluation. But it needs to be responsible. And those two, those two reports, the Leiden Manifesto and the Metric Tide was a report in the UK that um, I've been involved in, that one, um, basically saying, be realistic, use metrics properly. Let's just maybe stop trying to come up with a perfect model because I think um, in research evaluation, it's not an exact science. Much of science isn't an exact science. We just discover as we go along, but we have to be um, honest about what we're doing and we have to you know, be not bring in any un unintended consequences and cause damage. And this is another law. I'm glad to see there was Brandolini's law. I've seen that law before. This is another one. It's really important to take into account when a measure becomes the target, it might not be a good measure anymore. You see that a lot. So we need to be careful. If people are playing games, we have to be mindful of that. Often there's a reason why they're playing games. So we need to understand the context as well and not be so quick to blame and judge. We just have to say, is the system we have designed useful or not? So I go back to my cross. Well, I've been interested in metadata around science and research outputs particularly for a long time. It's really, really important. Um, and we will not be able to build indicators that are of any use to anyone unless we have good data that is consistent and that is shared. And the more we invent lots of new ways to share research, that's fantastic, but we will not be able to connect the systems and build interoperability between them where we want to unless the data is shareable. So I'm just going to quickly talk through some of the themes that I've been sort of working and thinking about. And we've been trying to do this at F1000, is trying to build in really kind of tight definitions of certain aspects of the research output. I don't think we have all the answers. I don't think there are any single answers, but I think there could be more commonality across systems. And, you know, working with organizations like Crossref and, and, and Cielo and other organizations that are doing things like indexing already, it's really important that we sort of think about standards. So... I'm just going to go through quickly the theme. So when I say platform, I mean publishing outlet. I mean preprint server. I mean indexing system. We need to know what that means. When we're talking about a publishing app, is it a journal? Is it not a journal? Does it have an, something like an ISSN, perhaps? And there's lots of things you could do. Um, Alex was talking on Monday about the CLO work underway to try and classify the peer review that is being used. So when an author comes to decide to publish in your platform, does it have a peer review model that they're happy with? Do they know that? Do they want to go with that peer review model? Do they like open peer review? Those kinds of things. So it's providing information, but in a consistent way. Something about maybe how long it takes for you on average to publish at the work. How long does the peer review take? Am I willing to wait six months or am I ready to go for a quick model? Those kinds of information would be really key to have. And it's really simple, some of that stuff. And so I kind of those kinds of descriptors, rather than indicators, they are indicators, but they're also essentially descriptors that help you evaluate what you're dealing with. Things like licenses and availability, you know, those kinds of things can be machine readable now. Are you, are you doing CC BY on your data? Are you doing open access? Those kinds of simple things around the outlet that you're choosing to publish on. And then we've got loads of things around the content. And I don't think I've got my whole list right here, but, you know, editorial checks. Is it checked for, is it peer reviewed? Is it, is it plagiarism? Do, do you, does this outlet do plagiarism checks? Do they do ethical checks? Again, the licensing. Maybe descriptors of the content type. Most publishers have a varied description of what it is. Is it a research article? Is it a data note? Is it a review article? And there's much variation there as well, which is quite hard to work with sometimes. DOIs are key. Affiliations. There are standards that Crossref are moving in, in the direction of now. You would fund a registry names. Who is it funded by? Can you use a structured list rather than randomly asking people in an unstructured way who's funded it? Because that helps the funder track what is linked to their funding without having to ask the researchers to tell them. Um, and then things like subject classification and keywords. This is all about discovering content so you can support, you know, trust in its quality and support reuse and use, which is the most important thing. Author descriptions. Again, this has been talked about a lot. We need 
you know, everyone collects names, but do we collect it in a way that we can track things? Um, institution affiliations, again. Funding source is key around the author. Um, and one of the things, again, I have heard this a lot. I've been working with, I've been working with ORCID over um, a number of years, and also uh, the contributor role taxonomy. There are things out there. Credit is not perfect. This is something that we use. But you can see we already capture this. A lot of the PLOS journals capture it. There are structured ways that you can start to recognize contributor roles. Um, and this is being built into a lot of manuscript submission system, systems now. It's, it's not perfect. People will argue forever that we've missed a role and, it's, you know, and it doesn't apply to all fields. That's, that's, that's okay. We can evolve things over, over time, but we need to sort of start collecting stuff now, otherwise we'll never be able to connect it. And then reviewer descriptions, just briefly. Um, this has also been talked about. We have a massive problem with peer review, getting people to peer review, finding reviewers for grants, for articles, um, for other purposes. Um, and we've been working, a number of agencies now, the one, one of the major benefits of open peer review and using ORCID with that is you can give credit and push to somebody's ORCID profile the fact they've spent time reviewing for you. So this is a great F1000 research open peer review box. Everybody here has got an ORCID, which is, we, I call that a full house. We're really, it's taken a long time, but we're getting there. Even the reviewers now mostly have ORCIDs. Um, and what we've also been doing is working with reviewers. When we, are, when we ask a peer reviewer, we say, is there anyone in your department who's, who's junior or some colleague or some, an early career researcher who can work with you and learn how to do a good peer review? And then we will name them as well. So we take multiple reviewers um, linked to a recommendation on, a, on an article and include their ORCID too. And then we are able to link this to, um, this is an example of what we do. So we have a system, F1000 has a system with ORCID so that anyone who's reviewed, where we have their ORCID, we push directly to ORCID the fact that they've reviewed. So you can start to get information about you know, their re review activity as well, which, which is useful. And then it comes back to the big picture, use quality indicators. I don't like the word impact. That was talked about yesterday. I've worked with the word impact for 20 years. Um, and I really liked some of the ideas yesterday. I've used the word circulation. I mean, I use the word reach, but it's about how, get, how to get work around. It doesn't really matter that we all use the same word for every situation, but I think that's what we mean when we talk about that or something. I liked the word influence yesterday as well. The citation is useful. I actually think a citation is useful, but we need to know what it means and how you're using it. So basically, and unless we have good information, building metadata infrastructure, it is actually part of good science, and we forget that. We focus very much on the outputs of research, getting it out there, but we actually need the information around those outputs to allow us to do anything. Um, so deciding, we need to decide what information is needed to support this. Standard definitions, where possible, I'm not, again, I, I heard the discussion and I was, I hadn't really thought about it. You know, people need to know where the standards have come from. That's totally important. But if there are standards that are useful, use them. Um, and then we need to build it in from the start. If you end up 15 years down the line realizing that you should have collected this information, you've missed a trick and we will be forever relying on things like the journal impact factor for want of nothing. We, can't, we haven't got anything else that we could even look at. So it's really important to build information in from the start. And the key thing here is interoperability. We don't have to use the, all the same platforms. We don't have to use the same metric platforms. We don't have to use you know, the same systems even. But where we can connect information, where that's important, that's really important and really useful. And that supports everybody. It supports discoverability. It supports use, reuse, impact. That's, I've used the word impact, but it supports everything. It's really important to do that. And that's something that's key. And my sort of, just, I'm going to have to throw this in, my, my sort of love is, we really don't do much research on research. We really don't, I call it science of science. We really don't do that, and we really don't know what works best. And this kind of information is kind of key for that. And it's a bit ironic that we, we worry about how the outputs are kind of all, what it all means, but actually the whole thing, we don't really understand very well about how to fund, how to, um, you know, reward, how to support people in the best way. And, and until we have really good data around that, we're really going to struggle and, and this is key to that and I think we must not forget that. So that's all I want to say. Obrigada. Again, I say obrigada for listening, but thank you for inviting me. <laughs>